good evening children good evening good evening ma'am good evening good evening ma'am good evening children good evening ma'am good evening good evening ma'am good evening yeah please go through this uh, uh, please go through example 9 see the information given see the solution alongside let me ask you some questions after that okay if the area of triangle abc if the area of triangle abc is 100 cm square what is the area of the quadrilateral or the trapezium axyc if area of abc is 100 what is the or what will be the area of the trapezium axyc triangle abc minus triangle xby no no I, you can give me the answer straight away what's the answer with respect to the situation given here what's the answer what will be the area of the trapezium axyc if the area of the whole triangle is 100 cm square children what is given xy divides triangle abc into two parts equal in area class 50 yeah 50 cm square it's given now here that xy divides triangle abc into two parts equal in area that means area of triangle bxy is equal to the area of the trapezium axyc the area of triangle bxy is equal to the area of triangle axyc now tell me if the area of the whole if the area of the triangle bxy children if the area of the triangle bxy is 30 cm square what's the area of the trapezium axyc 30 30 
What will be the area of the whole triangle ABC? What will be the area of the whole triangle ABC? 60 centimeters square. Yeah. 60. 60 centimeters square. So, what is area of triangle? Uh, what is the area of uh, triangle BXY? 30 centimeters square. Area of triangle ABC? 60 centimeters square. 30 by 60, 1 by 2. So the ratio, the ratio of the area of triangle BXY and triangle ABC is 1 by 2. Is 1 by 2. The ratio is 1 by 2. Because BXY is 30, then ABC is 60. 30 by 60, the ratio is 1 by 2. Now to find this ratio, to, we need to find the ratio AX by AB. We need to find the ratio AX by AB. To find this, we want to make use of the excuse me, area theorem. We're going to make use of the area theorem. So just, uh, just imagine the answer begins only from here, okay? It starts only from here. But to use the area theorem, remember that you have to prove that the uh, triangles are similar to each other. To use the area theorem, you need to show that the triangles which whose areas you want to compare are similar to each other. So here we take up triangle BXY and ABC and we show that they are similar to each other. Because only when they are similar, you can use the area theorem. That is one thing. I'm just telling you why we have found all this, why we have proved that they are similar. We have proved that these two triangles are similar so that we can use the area theorem. And then what is this? Since we can find the ratio of the areas of the two triangles, BXY and ABC, since we can find the ratio of their areas, we just find like we said 30 by 60 is 1 by 2. So here we work it like this and we show that the area of the uh, uh, small triangle BXY by the area of the whole triangle ABC, the area of the whole triangle ABC is 1 by 2. See the working here. See the working here. Area of the triangle BXY plus the area of the trapezium uh, AXYC is equal to the area of the whole triangle ABC. Yeah, that's true. But the area of area of uh, AXYC, the trapezium AXYC is equal to the area of the triangle BXY. So instead of the trapezium, replace it with the triangle BXY. The area of the trapezium is the same as the area of the triangle. So instead of the trapezium, use the triangle here. Area of BXY plus area of BXY is equal to area of triangle ABC. So twice area of BXY is equal to area of triangle ABC. So area of BXY by area of ABC is equal to 1 by 2. This will come down for division here. Area of BXY by area of ABC is equal to 1 by 2. 2 becomes 1 by 2 on the other side. So we found the we found the ratio of the areas of these two triangles is one by two. Show that these two triangles are similar to each other. Take up the two triangles, show that they are similar to each other. Since you know that XY is parallel to AC, you know that XY is parallel to AC, corresponding angles are equal, common angle. So the two triangles are similar by the double A similarity criterion. See, one is a small triangle BXY. One is a small triangle BXY. The other is the whole triangle uh, BAC, the big triangle BAC. BXY and BAC, they are similar by double A similarity criteria. So now we have proved that they are similar, the two triangles are similar. So now you can use the area theorem. Area theorem can be applied only on two similar triangles. So we first prove that they are similar. And now by area theorem, the ratio, the ratio of the areas of these two triangles, BXY and BAC. See here. So here, uh, the way you name the triangles, children, B, X, Y, B, A, C, here it is not important. Only when you use a similar symbol, the symbol for similarity, 
There the order is important. B X Y B A C. B X Y B A C. Here the order is important. Here you can even write uh, X B Y Y B X. When you are finding the ratio, the order in which you name the triangles is not important. You can write it in the correct order, but you you need not write also. It's not only when you use a similarity symbol. When you name the triangles here with the similarity symbol, the order is important. Nowhere else it's important. Nowhere else it's important. So here I've written B X Y B A C. Just I've just copied it from here. That's all. You can also call it B X Y and A B C children. Remember that. You can also call it B X Y A B C or X Y B and A B C. This ratio here, in this ratio, you can name the two triangles in any order. Because here the order is not important. Here the order is important. So children, when we started also, we found the uh, this we did it in the you know like the general approach. This is not related to area theorem. Here this one. This one is uh, because it's given that x y divides the whole triangle into two equal uh, portions. We know that the area of the small triangle by the area of the whole triangle is one by two. Then we show that the two triangles are similar to each other, so that we can use the area theorem. Okay, so you can write by area theorem area of triangle BXY by area of triangle ABC. You can write that on, that itself is equal to when you're writing the square of the ratio of the corresponding sides, children. You have to go back to this and not here. You cannot write BX by AB the whole square. See, I'm just uh, you know. Uh, Talking about the common mistakes children can make. What I'm saying is not a part of the explanation to explain this proof. I don't have to say all this. I'm talking about all this because these are the general mistakes we can make. By mistake, you know, you write area of triangle B X Y by A B C is equal to B X by A B the whole square. If that is correct, fine. If this order is correct, B X Y and uh, this order actually this is not A B C. It's BAC. It's BAC. Now see here, if you write XY by BC the whole square. Now BX by AB may be correct. BX by AB may be correct. But if you write, supposing XY by BC, it's not XY by BC. It's XY by AC. It's XY by AC. So please take the ratio of the corresponding sides from this and not from here. Or if you are naming it in a different way, don't take it from here. Okay, the corresponding sides. So you can write BX by BA the whole square, or you can write XY by AC the whole square, or you can write BY by BC the whole square. Then why have we written BX by BA the whole square? Because we are asked to find the ratio. We are asked to find the ratio uh, AX by AB, AX by AB. AX by AB, see a BX by BA, BX by BA, relevant ratio we have taken, meaning we have to find the ratio AX by AB, this one, AX by AB, AX by AB. We have used the ratio BX by BA here because that is the most relevant, BX by BA. Others are XY by AC, XY by AC, and the other one is uh, BY by BC, BY by BC. B Y by B C. So the most relevant one, B X by B A, B X by B A. All right, children. So area of triangle B X Y by area of triangle A B C. Or uh, sorry, B A C is equal to B X by B A the whole square. When two triangles, when two triangles are similar. When two triangles are similar, the ratio of their areas is equal to the square of the ratio of the corresponding sides. That's all. If you write this, you got the answer. Now, what will you write here for area of BXY by BAC? What will you write? 1 by 2. 1 by 2, because we know it's 1 by 2. 1 by 2 is equal to BX by BA the whole square, correct? 1 by 2 is equal to BX by BA the whole square. Because BXY by BA, this one, BXY by ABC, the ratio is 1 by 2. So 
So use that here. One by two is equal to b x by b a the whole square. That's why we found this. In order to use it here, only we found this here. Why did we prove that the triangle is similar? So that we can use the area theorem. Why did we find this ratio one by two? See, so that we can use it here. That is why we did these two things. Now simply work this, children, and find the ratio a x by a b. That's all. If you can write till here, you got the result. Now simply work ahead with this and find the ratio a x by a b. So that means you should slowly take away b x. A b can be retained. Retain a b, but you don't want b x because you want a x by a b. You don't want b x by uh, a b. Okay, you want a x by a b. So you'll you'll have to remove this. You need to take away b x and uh, introduce a x. We'll see how we do that. Here, one by two is equal to b x by b a the whole square. Now, how do we get rid of this? Uh, so, meaning, how do you uh, work further? b x by b a the whole square is one by two. b x by b a is equal to the square root of one by two, which is one by root two. Square root of one by two. So square root of one is one, and uh, square root of two is written as root two. After this step, take away b x. How do you change b x? How do you how do you take away b x and introduce a x? b x is b x can be written as a b minus a x. b x can be written as a b minus a x. Because we have to find the ratio. I told you, we have to find the ratio a x by a b. But we have b x here. So take away b x and introduce a x. How b x can be written as a b minus a x. a b minus a x. By a b. See now, don't worry. Why I've written b a as a b? Both are the same, no? A b b a both are the same. Okay. So b x is a b minus a x by a b is equal to one by root two. Now a b by a b minus a x by a b is equal to one by root two. A b by a b is one minus one by root two. Transpose one by root two. Transpose is equal to this one goes here a x by a b. Simplify this. Is ax by ab. Rational is the denominator. Multiply and divide by root two. And the ratio ax by ab is two minus root two by two. Nothing. After this is only simplification, children. After you substitute one by two is equal to bx by ba the whole square. Take the square root on the other side. And then remove b x and introduce uh, a x. B x should be written as a b minus a x. That's all. After that, you know, you will yourself know what to do. A b by a b minus a a x by a b is equal to one by root two. One minus a x by a b. Transpose. Bring this here. Take this here. So one minus one by root two is equal to a x by a b. So we got see here. We have something numerical here, a x by a b. We got it. We got it. But the thing is, we just want to simplify this. Okay, we simplified here by taking the LCM, but we are still not happy because the denominator is irrational. So we want to rationalize it. So here, from here to here is LCM, and from here to here is uh, rationalizing the denominator. Multiply the numerator and denominator by root two. Now root two into root two is two. Minus one into root two is minus root two by two. That's it. Do we understand, children? Children, any questions? Yes, ma'am. Any questions? No. I told you why we do all this. This one is to substitute when we use the area theorem. When we use the area theorem to substitute, we have found this. 
and we prove that the triangle is similar because only then we can use the area theorem. Area theorem can be applied only on two similar triangles. When you are writing the ratio of the areas, you can name the triangles in any order. Order is not important. But the ratio, the square of the ratio of the corresponding sides, please pick it from here. Please pick it from here. Don't pick it from here. If you have used a different order, don't pick it from here. This is wrong. If you have written a different order, that will be wrong. Please pick it from here. B X by B A the whole square. We can write X Y by A C the whole square. We can write B Y by B C the whole square. But we have written the most relevant thing. What will help us to find A X by A B? Because A X A X by A B is on this side. B X by A B. So B X by A B. So they are the line segments on the same side A B. So we write the most relevant ratio. That's all. So XY is parallel to AC and also XY divides the triangle ABC into two parts equal in area. This is what is given. One is XY is parallel to AC. OK, the other one is XY divides the whole triangle ABC into two parts equal in area. So given this, we need to find the ratio AX by AB. Yeah, please go through this. You shouldn't have any doubt with this. Can I go to the next one? One minute. Okay. Any questions, children? This in yesterday's test, I think. Yeah, we saw this in yesterday's test. Same question, not even similar, same question.
So again, we have to find the ratio of the areas of the triangles AOB and COD. So to use the area theorem, see we can if supposing you know that you know the areas. Supposing you know the area of this triangle AOB is say 10. You know the area of this triangle is 10 and you know the area of this triangle is 40. Then you can straight away find the ratio. You don't have to use area theorem. There is no rule that you should always use the area theorem. If you know the areas or if you can find their areas, you can straight away uh, find the ratio using their values. Now here if AOB is uh, uh, 10 centimeters square and COD is 40 centimeters square, 10 by 40, 1 by 4 is a ratio. I'm saying, for example. All right. So if supposing it was given like that, you can directly uh, use the values, the values of the areas. But here you cannot find the area of triangle AOB and COD. You cannot find it. You cannot find the areas. So we use area theorem and to use area theorem, you need to show that the triangles are similar. To use area theorem, you need to show that the triangles are similar. Okay, so since we need to find the ratio of the areas of these two triangles, AOB and COD, we'll first show that they are similar. AOB and COD, we'll show that they are similar. So, you know, because it's a trapezium, alternate angles are equal. Angle one of triangle AOB is equal to angle two of triangle COD. Angle three of triangle AOB is equal to angle four of triangle COD. For both the reason is alternate angles are equal. So the two triangles AOB and COD are similar by the double A similarity criterion. That's what we have till here. And why we are proving they're similar? Because only then we can use the area theorem. Now, area of triangle AOB, we need to find this area of triangle AOB by COD. This is what we have to find. So area of triangle AOB by area of triangle COD is equal to the square of the ratio of their corresponding sides. So which sides to take? See, we have some information here. AB is equal to 2 times CD. We have to use this information. AB is equal to 2 CD. So we'll take AB by CD, the whole square. Why should we take that? Because we are given that we are given that AB is equal to twice CD. So we will take the ratio AB by CD, the whole square. By area theorem, area of AOB by area of COD is equal to AB by CD, the whole square. Now area of triangle AOB by area of triangle COD is equal to what is AB? Twice CD. AB is twice CD. AB, it's given here. See here. AB is twice CD is given here. AB is twice CD. So substitute that. Twice CD. By CD. Typing error. By CD. The whole square. So what will happen in the next step? It will be 4 times CD square. 4 times CD square by CD square. So CD square and CD square will get cancelled. Or you can cancel CD here itself. This is CD children. By mistake I have written CO. The CD. AB by CD, AB, I showed you AB by CD, the whole square. And AB is given to be two times CD. So replace by CD. Now CD and CD will get cancelled. CD and CD cancels. So two by one, the whole square or four by one. So the required ratio is four is to one. The required ratio is four is to one. This trapezium uh, figure does not match the information given because here it's given that uh, AB is twice CD. I should have uh, marked it like this. I should have marked ABCD like this. AB C D. Only then AB it will make it makes sense. So this diagram here. I just picked it from somewhere, so it doesn't match the information given. The, the proof is fine, children. The answer is correct. I just put the trapezium from somewhere, but it doesn't match because AB is two times CD, you know, but here AB is small. AB is small and CD is long. Ignore that. Ignore the figure here. You draw the figure. 
you write correctly. So mark mark this is a CD. You can mark A B here. A B C D. C D should be small. A B C D. Join and the same proof. The same proof. A B is equal to two times C D. So to find the ratio of the areas of two triangles, it's not that you should use area theorem. If you can find their areas, supposing they're equilateral triangles and you know their sides, root three by four a square. So I'm trying to say that you don't have to always use the area theorem to compare the areas. If you can find their areas using the formula because uh, information is given to you, Find the areas and find the ratio. Only when that is not possible, we you know make use of area theorem. Is this understood, children? This one? Any questions? Class, use the emoji. Raise your hands. Rakshan, are you there? Rakshan? All right. <clears throat> so here we are given two triangles, one triangle ABC, another triangle DBC, ABC, DBC. Look at the triangles. So it's like, you know, uh, there is this line segment BC. There's this line segment BC. And on BC, we have a triangle ABC like this, ABC like this. Okay. On the same base BC, we have another triangle. On the same base BC, we have another triangle. So like this, we have another triangle. What is the triangle? BDC, BDC. And then this one is also connected. Like this is the figure. So it's not, it's not a quad, it is a quadrilateral. Finally, it's a quadrilateral. But see, it's A, B, D, C. The quadrilateral is A, B, D, C, not A, B, C, D. It's A, B, D, C, or it is A, C, D, B. Don't think it is not named properly. Because if we have to name a quadrilateral ABCD, we don't mark it like this. We will not mark ABCD like this, ABCD like this. That's incorrect. If you have to mark a trapezium ABCD, you will not mark it like this. But here, finally, the quadrilateral formed as itself ABDC. It's not ABCD. 
the quadrilateral form is not ABCD. It is ABDC. Why? Because how is the quadrilateral form on the side BC on this line segment BC? We have one triangle ABC. We have ABC on BC. On the same side BC, we have another triangle BDC. 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 And then this one is connected. AD is connected. AD is connected and this is O. Okay. So that's what is the figure. Two triangles with a common base BC. Two triangles with a common base BC. ABC. DBC. All right. So the quadrilateral form is ABDC. The diagonals of this quadrilateral are AD and BC. AD and BC are the diagonals of this quadrilateral which meet at O. AD and BC are the diagonals of this quadrilateral that intersect at O. We need to prove that area of triangle ABC by area of triangle DBC is AO by DO. So to find to find the ratio of the areas of these two triangles ABC and DBC, see here ABC and DBC. Whenever we have to compare areas, the first thing that occurs to us is area theorem. But to use area theorem, you need to show that the triangle is similar. But if you look at these two triangles ABC and DBC, there is no information to show that they are similar. And remember, you cannot treat this as a trapezium. You cannot treat this as a trapezium. It's not given. It may look like a trapezium, but it's not given to be a trapezium. So we cannot we cannot talk about corresponding and alternate angles being equal here. Now the first thing you'll have to think of is can we prove that these two triangles are similar? Can we prove that triangle ABC and DBC are similar? The answer is no. You cannot prove that they are similar. We cannot prove that they are similar. There's no information. There's no information to prove that they are similar. And one more thing is, if you're comparing the areas of two things, they need not be similar. See, so when you see, you can compare the areas. Or you can find the ratio of the areas of any two triangles. They need not be similar. They need not be similar. Just that if they are similar, we can use the area theorem. That's all it is. That doesn't mean that you can find the ratio of the areas only if they are similar. If you want to use the area theorem, then they have to be similar triangles to find the ratio of their areas. So here triangle ABC and triangle uh, DBC, they need not be similar also. They need not be similar, but still you can find the ratio of their areas. Triangle ABC and triangle DBC need not be similar. To compare, to find the ratio of their areas, you don't have to, they need not be similar. And here you can, if you want to use the area theorem, it's, it's, there is no information. Even if they are similar, we don't have information to show that they are similar. So we use the formula. When, when you cannot prove, when you have to find the ratio of the areas of two triangles, if you can prove that they are similar, then you can find the ratio using area theorem. If you cannot prove that they are similar, if you cannot prove that they are similar, use the formula. Use the formula. Have patient height. But for that you need altitude. So we construct the altitudes of triangles ABC and DBC. Do we understand the reason for the construction? We construct AM perpendicular to BC. That is the altitude of the triangle ABC. 
then we construct the altitude for triangle dbc dc is the altitude because we are going to use half base into height we are going to use half base into height we don't have height we have base bc height we don't know so let am be the altitude in triangle abc and c uh, dc be the altitude Sorry, D N. Sorry, D N. A M and D N. A M. A M. Altitude of triangle A B C on B C. D N. Altitude on the side B C of the triangle D B C. So let's begin like this. So you just write out what was given and what was we proved construction and the proof here. Take up the triangles. Take up the triangles AOM and DON. Take up these two triangles, children. Take up these two triangles, this triangle and this triangle. These two triangles. Show that these two triangles are similar. How will you show that they are similar? Angle 1 is equal to angle 2. Vertically opposite angles are equal. Angle 1 is equal to angle 2 because vertically opposite angles are equal. And angle 3 is equal to angle 4 because by construction 90 degrees. So triangle OMA is similar to triangle OND. The order is important. When you say OMA, you must say OMND. So by double similarity criterion, the two triangles are similar. Because in the two triangles AMO and uh, AMO and uh, DNO, vertically opposite angles are equal and by construction 90 degrees we have so by double a they are similar if they are similar their corresponding sides are proportional their corresponding sides are proportional so we have am if you can write all the three children if you have a doubt as to which two to write you can write all the three right imagine you have written all the three here that is om by on is equal to ma by nd is equal to oa by od imagine you have written all the three Write all the three. Maybe we don't realize which two to write. So you can write all the three, no problem. Now, now find this is a preparation actually. Till here is actually a preparation for something. Till here is actually a preparation. The actual actual proof is only this much. The actual proof was only this much. Only this is the result. This is the proof. That's all. Only this. We we get AO by DO, but we should sorry we we get we when you actually compare you get AM by DN, but you should get AO by DO. So here we have proved that AM by DN is equal to AO by DO. That's all it is. I'll tell you. I'll repeat it. Let me finish it and then repeat it. So this is a preparation, children. What we have done here is just a preparation. See the answer is only here. We have to find area of triangle ABC by area of triangle DBC. Okay, say we start from here. Area of triangle ABC by DBC is equal to ABC by DBC is equal to half base into height, half into base BC into altitude AM. Similarly, for DBC, base BC into altitude DM. So what happens? Half half cancels, BC BC cancels. We have AM by DN. So we got it. We got what we got. We found area of triangle. We found area of triangle. See, imagine you started here. Imagine you started only here. Okay. So we have to find area of triangle ABC by DBC. So we start writing area of ABC by DBC is equal to formula half base into height. Half base into height. So half and half gets cancelled. BC and BC gets cancelled. And we have AM by DN. And you know we are happy that we got it. But when we go back to what we have to prove, we have to show it's equal to AO by DO, not AM by DN, not this one. So prove that AM by DN is equal to AO by DO. That's what we have done here. We get AM by DN. No, but that's not the result. We should show that it's equal to AO by DO. That means what? You must prove that AM by DN is equal to AO by DO. And how is that possible? Okay, we have to prove that AM by DN, this one, is equal to AO by DO. 
is equal to AO by DO. Only then you can, because we got we got an answer, but that is that is AM by DN, but it's actually AO by AO by DO. So show that AM by DN is equal to AO by DO. So where is AM? AM, and where is DN? DN, 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 DN. It's here. Is equal to AO. AO is here by DO. Okay, so these are the sides of which triangle of triangle AOM. These are the sides of triangle AOM and triangle. Uh, uh, what is it? DON. 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 That is why we take up those two triangles and prove that they are similar because uh, these four line segments AM, DN, AO, DO, they are all uh, the sides of the triangle. These two triangles. They are the sides of these this triangle and this triangle. So when, when can we get the two ratios equal? How can we show that AM by DN is equal to AO by DO? When we show that those two triangles are similar, then their corresponding sides will be proportional. That is why we prove that these two triangles are similar. Children, we must understand why we have done it like this. So I told you one thing. We cannot, with the information we have, ABC and DBC cannot be proved are similar to each other. Even if they are, they may be similar, they may not be similar. But we don't have sufficient information. So we go with the formula half base into height. Using that, we get AM by DN, but we should get AO by DO. And that is possible by proving two other triangles are similar. See if this question is given, you should be able to do the proof. So meaning you must, this should uh, occur to you that you need to take up the construction, prove that these two triangles are similar. So please understand if you have a doubt, why not that? Why not just ask me now? Just a minute, children. Just go through the answer. So what is the information here? On the line segment BC, we have two triangles. ABC, DBC. On the same line segment BC. As a result, a quadrilateral AB, DC is formed with the diagonals AD and BC intersecting at O. That is 
this is what we have to prove that uh, area of triangle ABC by DBC is equal to AO by DO. We don't have actually we don't have any information to prove that they are similar. So we go with the formula area of triangle ABC. Look at this part area of triangle ABC by DBC is half base into height. And when we do that, we get the ratio as AM by DN. But we need to show it's equal to AO by DO. So we identify AO, DO, AM, DM are the line segments of which two triangles. We identify that. We take up those two triangles and prove that they are similar. And from similarity, we get a proportion. And hence, we get area of, uh, area of triangle ABC by DBC is equal to AO by DO because it's equal to AM by DN. Go through children. Children, I said go through this proof. Yes. Yeah. Are the two triangles given to be congruent to each other? Are the two triangles given to be congruent to each other? Yes. 
No, no. Okay, then we have to prove That's that they are congruent to each other. What is given? Are they similar to each other? Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah, and one more thing, their areas are equal. We have two similar triangles whose areas are equal. So we know that two similar triangles can be one big and one small. When we have two similar triangles, we can have one big triangle and one proportionately small triangle. But it's given that the areas of these two similar triangles are equal. That means they have to be congruent to each other. That's what we have to prove. We have two triangles. They are similar to each other. It's given to us. So similar meaning the picture you get in your mind is okay. One big triangle, one small triangle. They are similar to each other. But one more thing is given that their areas are equal. They have the same area. They are similar and they have the same area. Okay, so in this case they have to be congruent triangles. That's what you have to prove. So take up two triangles, call them A, B, C, D, E, F. They are similar and they have the same area. But we need to prove that they are congruent. That is, they are identical triangles. So since we know that they are similar to each other, we know that the, so how do we prove that they are congruent? By using one of the uh, five congruence uh, criteria, SSS, SAS, AAS, uh, ASA or RHS. So we need to use any one of the five congruence criteria to show that they are congruent to each other. So let's get some information for that. We know that the two triangles are similar. So by area theorem, we have area of triangle ABC. Area of triangle ABC by area of triangle DEF is equal to AB by DE the whole square. But, but it's given that area of triangle ABC is equal to area of triangle DBF. See here. First is we use this one. The two triangles are similar to each other. Then by area theorem, we have Area of triangle ABC by area of triangle DEF is equal to the square of the ratio of their corresponding sides. Okay, this is by area theorem. But the next thing given to us is the two triangles have the same area. They have the same area. That means DEF, the area of DEF is equal to the area of triangle ABC. They have the same area. So instead of DEF, say ABC. Or you can write, see, both have the same area. So either you have ABC as it is and make DEF ABC or have DEF as it is and make ABC as DEF. Anything is fine. Both are equal children. ABC is equal to DEF. You can change anything. ABC is equal to DEF. ABC is equal to DEF. These two are equal. These two are equal. ABC, DEF are equal. So you can maybe have DEF as it is and Write ABC also as DEF. That's also fine. Okay, so area of ABC by ABC because the area of DEF is equal to area of ABC is equal to AB by DE the whole square. So this is one. This is one. AB by DE the whole square is equal to one. So AB by DE is one. So when you cross multiply, you get AB is equal to DE. AB is equal to DE. So we prove that AB is equal to DE. AB is equal to DE. Now this is enough. Now we already know that angle A is equal to angle D because the triangles are similar. Because the triangles are similar. And we also know that angle B is equal to angle E because the triangles are similar. In similar triangles, corresponding angles are equal. So now using A and B from A, these two sides are equal. And from B, angles equal. So from A and B, by using the A, ASA, which should be congruence criterion, by mistake I've written similarity. By ASA congruence criterion, the two triangles are congruent to each other. ABC is congruent to DEF. By ASA congruence criterion, by ASA congruence criterion, the two triangles are congruent to each other. You can also write angle C is equal to angle F and say AAS. 
you can also say uh, AB is equal to uh, DE, angle A is equal to angle D, and then angle C is equal to F because they're similar triangles, no? so corresponding angles are equal. C is equal to F. So by AAS, AAS similarity, AAS congruence criterion, the two triangles are congruent to each other. We can also use SSS children. We can also use SSS. So we know that by area theorem, area of triangle ABC uh, by DEF is equal to, it's further equal to BC. Let me write it here. This one is also equal to complete this. What are the other two ratios? is equal to BC by BC by EF EF the whole square correct BC by EF the whole square also equal to AC by DF the whole square AC by DF is also equal to AC by DF the whole square The next step, what will you get? So here also you will get the same thing. Is equal to BC by EF the whole square. Is equal to AC by DF the whole square. So now we have one here. We have one here. So AB by DE the whole square is one. BC by EF the whole square is one. AC by DF the whole square is one. Each of these is equal to one. So like how you got AB is equal to DE. Like how you got AB is equal to DE. Similarly, you will get BC is equal to EF. When you equate it to one, you will get BC is equal to EF. BC is equal to EF. And you will also get what you are, what will you also get? BC is equal to EF and AC equal to DF. AC is equal to DF. You will also get AC is equal to DF. You will get these three results. Then AB is equal to DE. Then BC is equal to BC is equal to EF. And then AC is equal to DF. AC is equal to DF. So this makes SSS. Then you don't have to write this. Then you don't have to write this. This one you don't have to write. So by SSS uh, congruence criterion, the two triangles are congruent to each other. If you write all the ratios like this, AB by DE the whole square is equal to BC by EF the whole square is equal to AC by. Uh, you can do it like this. This is one way. Or after you get AB by DE is one, you can say that because they're similar, AB by DE is the same as BC by EF is the same as AC by DF. So everything, everything will be one. You can do it like this, or you can even continue from here. After you get AB by DES1, after you get AB by DES1, you can write AB by DE is also BC by EF, right? AB by DE is also BC by EF. AB by DE is 1, but that's equal to BC by DF. So that is also 1. And it's also equal to AC by AC by DF. AC by DF is also 1. After you get AB by DE as 1, after you get this AB by DE is equal to 1, AB by DE is equal to BC by EF because similar triangles, corresponding sides are proportional, BC by EF. If AB by DE is 1, BC by EF is also 1. 
because AB by DE is equal to BC by EF is equal to AC by DEF. So everything will be one. So from here also you can continue. If you don't write in the beginning, you can after you get this step also you can just do this. So BC is equal to EF and AC is equal to DF. Children, am I clear, children? So SSS rule that uh, triangles are congruent to each other. So you can use SSS, ASA, AAS, SAS. Except RHS, you can use everything. You can use SAS also. So for SAS, you can write any two. Like you can write uh, AB is equal to DE. We'll get AB is equal to DE. And then if you write uh, BC is equal to EF, if you write BC is equal to EF, is equal to EF, then you must say that angle B is equal to angle E. In similar triangles, corresponding angles are equal, no? So B is equal to E. So SAS rule. Am I clear, children? You can use any rule, SSS, SAS, ASA, AAS, except RHS. Please acknowledge, children. Please tell me if you don't understand also. Okay. Why this class suddenly has turned like this? I don't know. Am I audible? Is my voice very clear? Yes. Okay. Ma'am? Yeah, yes, Sara. Yes, Arna. Ma'am, in similar triangles, we cannot say that the corresponding sides are equal, no, ma'am? Only the ratio is equal. The correct, ratio correct. Of the corresponding sides. Correct. The ratio of the corresponding sides will be equal. The sides may, need not be equal. They'll, they, they'll be proportional. Okay. Yeah. I want to I want you to go through what is given and what is to be proved. I want you to see the proof one so that. I think will be, uh, you know, easily understood when I explain.
Ma'am, somebody's mic is on. No, I cannot hear. No. Children, please disable your mic, but I can't hear anything, Arna. Ma'am, it shows Priya's mic is on. Oh. Oh, yeah. Priya, kindly disable your mic. Who can state the midpoint theorem? Okay, so the line segment joining the midpoints of any two sides of a triangle. The line segment joining the midpoints of any two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side and equal to half the length of the third side. So here, D is the midpoint of AB, E is the midpoint of BC, F is the midpoint of AC. So now, if you look at this DF, it's a line segment joining the midpoints of uh, these two sides, AB and AC of the triangle. Then by the theorem, it will be parallel to the third side. DF will be parallel to the third side and the length of DF will be half the length of the third side. That is, if uh, the third side is say 10 centimeters, then this will be 5 centimeters. I'll tell you like this. I'll tell you what is to be given to use the midpoint theorem. What is to be given and what are the results? Given is only two things. Midpoint of, okay, one thing. You need to know the midpoint of two sides of the triangle, any two sides of the triangle. If you know the midpoints of any two sides of the triangle, you can use the midpoint theorem. That's all. If you if you know the midpoints of any two sides of the triangle, any two sides of the triangle. If you know the midpoints of any two sides of the triangle, you can use a the midpoint theorem. So here we know the midpoints of for the midpoints of all the three sides, but take only two at a time. So here D is the midpoint of AB, F is the midpoint of AC. So we know the midpoints of AB and AC. So the line segment joining the midpoints DF will be parallel to the third side BC. DF will be parallel to BC and DF will be equal to half the length of BC. So if BC is 20 centimeters, DF will be 10 centimeters. This is midpoint theorem, 9th standard. And we have also, last year we have seen that if the area of this triangle, all these four triangles are congruent to each other. So this figure is formed like this. You can have any triangle. It can be a scalene triangle also. Okay, you know the midpoint of this side. You know the midpoint of this side. You also know the midpoint of this side. When you join the midpoints, a triangle is formed. When you join the midpoint, a triangle is formed. Now there are four triangles. One, two, three, four. We have seen last year that all these four triangles will be congruent to each other. All these four triangles will be congruent to each other. So if the if the area of this triangle, if the area of this triangle is 15 centimeter square, what will be the area of the whole triangle? If the area of one triangle there is 15 centimeter square, what will be the area of the whole triangle? How 
How many small triangles are there? Four. 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 All the four triangles are congruent to each other. That means they'll have the same area. Identical triangles, congruent triangles. Sixty centimeters square. Yeah, identical triangles meaning congruent triangles. So if the area of one triangle there is fifteen, the area of the whole triangle will be fifteen into four, sixty centimeters square. See, you can have any triangle, any triangle. It can be a scalene triangle also. Midpoint, midpoint, midpoint. Join the midpoints, you get a triangle. Now you can see four triangles. One, two, three, four. The four triangles will be congruent to each other. So those four, those four pieces will have the same. Uh, they are identical triangles. The four pieces are identical. They are congruent to each other. If they are identical, they'll have the same area. They will have the same area. Just a minute, children. Excuse me, children. Yeah, I was uh, so I was telling you that these four triangles will be congruent to each other, so they'll have the same area. They'll have the same area. Now tell me what will be the what will be this ratio? Now, if the area of this uh, if this a, if the area of one triangle here is 10 centimeter square, 10 centimeter square. Okay, so here in this figure, if this is 10, this is also 10. This will also be 10. This will also be 10. So where is area of uh, DEF? This is the area of DEF. This is DEF. Its area is 10. Area of DEF is 10. 10 by area of the triangle ABC. Area of triangle ABC is 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. 40. 40. So 10 by 40. 1 by 4 will be the ratio. The ratio is always 1 by 4. The ratio will always be 1 by 4.
Okay. So how do we prove this? So for that you will have to prove that you will have to prove that this this one is a parallelogram. This one is a parallelogram, and you must also prove that this one is a parallelogram. See it? You can prove three parallelograms here. This one is a parallelogram. I'll show you one more. I'll show you one more. This one. This one is also a parallelogram. You can also prove that this is a parallelogram. You can prove three parallel. You can identify three quadrilaterals and prove that they are parallelograms in this figure. I'll show you all the three again. See, here, this is a parallelogram. This is a quadrilateral, which you can show as a parallelogram. This is the first one. All right. The next one. This is a quadrilateral, which you can prove as a parallelogram. This is the second one. And finally, we have this. Which you can prove is a parallelogram. So choose any two of the three. We can we can get three quadrilaterals from this. We can get three quadrilaterals from this. Choose any two and prove that they are parallelograms. Why? Because again we are going to use we are going to use uh, the area theorem to get this ratio one by four. We are going to use the area theorem to get the ratio one by four, but to use the area theorem, we need to show that these two triangles are similar to each other. But to prove that they are similar, we don't have any information. So when we prove that they are parallelograms, we will be able to find uh, corresponding angles that are equal. So that's why we show we prove that. Uh, two out of these, uh, two out of these three quadrilaterals are parallelograms. In fact, all the three are parallelograms. You prove, you choose any two, and prove that they are parallelograms. Just to get information, when you prove it, when you prove uh, two quadrilaterals to be parallelograms, then there are pro there is the pro property of a parallelogram which says opposite angles are equal. Opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. So using that, you can prove that the triangles are similar. So now let's do it from the beginning. So I told you from behind. I can repeat it. Talking from behind to find the ratio of the areas of these two triangles, this triangle and the whole triangle. This triangle and the whole triangle, the ratio is one by four. That's fixed. To find the ratio of the areas, we are going to use area theorem. To use area theorem, we need to show that triangle DEF is similar to ABC. But right now, to prove that ABC, to right now to prove that ABC is similar to DEF, we don't have any information. We need some information to prove that they are similar. So to get to get information in order to prove that they are similar, we prove two quadrilaterals to be parallelograms so that we can use this property opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal just for that and how to prove that they are parallelograms by using the midpoint theorem how to prove two parallelograms by using the midpoint theorem and how do we use the midpoint theorem is like this so in triangle abc in triangle abc d is the midpoint of a a I can't see the letters. So in triangle ABC, D is the midpoint of AB, F is the midpoint of AC. So by midpoint theorem, DF is parallel to BC and DF is equal to half of BC. That is DF will be equal to BE. You don't have to write all those steps. You can just write by midpoint theorem. Just by midpoint theorem. D is the midpoint of AB, F is the midpoint of AC. So by midpoint theorem, DF will be parallel to BC. Again, if DF is parallel to BC, that means DF is parallel to BE and DF is parallel to EC. Because if DF is parallel to BC, 
that means df is parallel to be and df is parallel to ec we just want parallel lines for uh, to prove that they are parallelograms can do we all remember the midpoint theorem which we learned last year yes ma'am okay also then we can say that df is equal to half of bc no ma'am according yeah, to df point. correct yeah df is equal to half bc df is equal to half bc All right, children. So now I was telling you that DF is parallel to BC. So DF is parallel to BE and DF is parallel to EC. You don't have to give so many steps. You can directly write. You can directly write by midpoint theorem. You can write the results. But I'm just telling you now if now E is the midpoint of BC and F is the midpoint of AC. So EF will be parallel to AB by midpoint theorem. EF is parallel to AB. That means EF is parallel to AD and EF is parallel to uh, DE, DB, DB. And again here, D is the midpoint of AB, E is the midpoint of BC. So DE is parallel to AC. That means DE is parallel to AE and DE is parallel to FC. So these results you don't have to write so much in detail. You can just you can just write what I have mentioned here. See, since D, E and F are the midpoints of A, B, B, C and A, C respectively by midpoint theorem, straight away write the parallel lines. D, F will be parallel to B, C. E, F will be parallel to A, B. And D, E will be parallel to A, C. You can write the results straight away. You don't have to show any any more steps. Since D, E and F are the midpoints of the sides A, B, B, C and A, C. D by midpoint theorem, D, F will be parallel to B, C. E, F will be parallel to A, B and D, E will be parallel to A, C. Now go on to prove why they are parallelograms. I told you choose any two. So D, F, E, B. D, F, E, B is a parallelogram for these reasons. Opposite sides are parallel. And A, D, E, F. ADEF is a parallelogram. I've chosen any two, so I've, I think I've taken ADEF, this one. Okay, so ADEF is a parallelogram for these reasons. Just go through this, children, this part. Please go through this part. OK, so that's what it is. Just say D, E and F are the midpoints. So by midpoint theorem, DF will be parallel to BC, EF will be parallel to AB and DE parallel to AC. And then choose two quadrilaterals. So here you see DFEB, DF, where's F, DFEB. DFEB, DFEB. And I've taken A, D, E, F, these two, and prove that they are parallelograms. That's it. You should be able to understand all this children. I've given the reasons here. Uh, yeah, and why is it a parallelogram? Because both the pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, so it's a parallelogram. All right. Now, in a parallelogram, opposite angles are equal. In a parallelogram, opposite angles are equal. Now, come to this. 
ആംഗിൾ ആംഗിൾ വൺ നോ ദിസ് ഇസ് എ പാർലോഗ്രാം ഡി ബി ഇ എഫ് ഇസ് എ പാർലോഗ്രാം സോ ഓപ്പോസിറ്റ് ആംഗിൾ വൺ ആൻഡ് ടു ആർ ഈക്വൽ സി വി പ്രൂവ് ദ ഡി ബി ഇ എഫ് ഇസ് എ പാർലോഗ്രാം സോ ഓപ്പോസിറ്റ് ആംഗിൾ വിൽ ബി ഈക്വൽ വൺ ഇസ് ഈക്വൽ ടു and we have also proved that ad ef is a parallelogram so 3 is equal to 4 opposite angle is equal but what is 1 it's an angle of def and it is equal to 2 which is an angle of abc now see we have it's about these two triangles def and abc it's about these two triangles def and abc see here angle 1 of def is equal to angle 2 of abc why because they are the opposite angles of a parallelogram again angle 3 of def angle 3 of def is equal to angle 4 of abc why because 3 and 4 are opposite angles of a parallelogram they are equal so now these two triangles def and abc are similar by double a similarity criterion and now we can use the area theorem they are similar by double a similarity criterion now the ratio of their areas is equal to the square of the ratio of their corresponding sides square of the ratio of their corresponding sides you can write anything you can write d by ca ef by ab or df by cb anything now after writing this by area theorem de is de but what is ac you can change anything what is ac what is ac ac de and ac what is the relation between de and ac so we know that as uh, i think i have mentioned now de is equal to half of ac by midpoint theorem de will be equal to half of ac so if you want to if you want to replace de you must say half ac if you want to replace ac you must say twice de okay if you want to remove if d is equal to half of ac so instead of ac you can write twice de or instead of d you can write half of ac but what do we have here that that's the relation i'm saying children by midpoint theorem you'll have de is equal to half of ac that is d is equal to af d is equal to fc because f will be the midpoint then i mean f is already the midpoint when you say df is equal to half of ac df is equal to half of ac since f is the midpoint de will be equal to af or de will be equal to fc also now they are the opposite sides of the parallelogram they will be equal de will be equal to af because they are the opposite sides of the parallelogram in a parallelogram opposite sides are equal now with what should we replace this de and ac de and ac is here de ac so ac can be written as twice de ac can be written as twice de or you can take away uh, de and write it as half ac any one any one okay i have shown the other step also you can also write it as twice af first and then uh, twice de clean the figure so d and de will get cancelled 1 by 2 the whole square which is 1 by 4 we'll discuss the order of the proof again so you can divide it into four parts this proof first is using midpoint theorem you must identify the parallel lines using midpoint theorem identify the parallel lines df parallel to bc de parallel to ac ef parallel to ab identify the parallel lines that's the first thing using midpoint theorem identifying the parallel lines one two there are three quadrilaterals prove that any two of them are parallelograms that is 2 3 
now that we have parallelograms or we have their properties opposite angles are equal so take up the two triangles def and abc and show that they are similar to each other that is 3 four now that we have proved df and abc are similar by area theorem their ratio is equal to the square of the ratio of their corresponding sides so that's the that's where we get the ratio and these changes are by midpoint theorem Please go through all this and ask me if you don't understand this one, this one. Yes, children, any questions? Why is C A twice A F? Why is C A twice A F? Because it's the midpoint. Because F is the midpoint of A C. And why twice A F is written as twice D E? That means AF is equal to DE, right? If you can write twice AF as twice DE, that means AF is equal to DE. Why is AF equal to DE? Why is AF equal to DE? Because they're the opposite sides of the parallelogram ADEF. Because they are the opposite sides of the parallelogram ADEF. CA is written as twice AF because F is the midpoint of AC. And AF is written as DE because AF is equal to DE. Opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. So identifying identifying parallel lines 
by midpoint theorem is one part. Then proving two quadrilaterals to be parallelograms is the second part. Then proving that the triangles are similar. Which triangles? D, E, F, and A, B, C. How suddenly we can prove they are similar? Why all this? All this while we didn't do. Why suddenly we are proving that they are similar? Because now we have gathered information. We have parallelograms now, and in a parallelogram, opposite angles are equal. So that's what we're using here. Angle one is equal to angle two. Opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. Okay, so now, now that we have parallelograms using their properties, we prove that the triangles are similar. And once the triangles are similar, then uh, the ratio of their areas. This is the fourth part. The ratio of their areas is the same as the square of the ratio of their corresponding sides. You can take any corresponding sides, children. Supposing you write E F by A B the whole square. Let's work this. Supposing we write E F by A B the whole square. Anything you can write. E F by A B the whole square. Corresponding sides. E F by A B the whole square. How will you change? What is E? Uh, what is A B? What is AB? How can you rewrite AB? Can I write AB as? Yeah, somebody wants AB to say. Plus BD. Yeah, AB is. D is the midpoint AD of AB, right? D is the midpoint of uh, AB. So AB can be written as twice. Twice BD or twice AD. Yeah, you can write anything. Yeah, you you can write anything. You can write twice AD or twice BD. You can write that as twice, so it will be E F. By which one? Arna, which one? Twice. Twice. Any one. Say any one. A D. A D. Twice A D. The whole square. Now further, E F is equal to A D, right? E F is equal to A D. E F is equal to A D. Why? Why is EF equal to AD? Because it's a parallelogram and opposite sides are equal. Equal, yeah. So you can write twice AD as twice EF. You can write twice AD as twice EF because AD is equal to EF. Why is EF? Because AD is equal to EF. Now EF and EF gets cancelled. EF and EF gets cancelled. 1 by 2 the whole square, which is 1 by 4. All right, children. Take a screenshot of this one. Take a picture, children. This one. Done, children? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, this one. And three. Yeah, this is important. Please go through this. Please go through this one. I have. Uh, you can see that uh, we have proved it both using area theorem and without using area theorem. All right, children. So that's it for today's session. 
if you have any questions please uh, stay back and ask me else you may leave the call thank you children thank you ma'am thank you children thank you ma'am thank you children good night thank you ma'am thank you good night thank you ma'am thank you thank you good night good night children thank you ma'am yeah arna ma'am can you please show the sixth one sixth one na huh? one minute this one na huh? yes ma'am uh, we already done this proof in the uh... oh no 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 yeah yeah you you can you can take a screenshot of this one yeah thank you yeah okay 